Good afternoon, and I am so grateful for the opportunity to be here and to discuss with you my cataract surgery pearls for patients' eyes that have pre-existing trabeculectomy or tube shot. My disclosures relevant are Allergan, LX, Glaucose, Neomedics, and Sight Sciences. As cataract surgeons, we know when we do glaucoma patients, they tend to have increased challenges. And that is even more so if they've had a prior trabeculectomy or tube shunt. We need more time, more thought, and more intraoperative skills. Factors that pose these potential problems are typically anatomical. There can be poor pupil dilation from previous inflammatory bouts. There can be an overhanging bleb that obscures the view. And there can be two positions that we need to deal with, whether they're affecting the cornea or the cataract or our view during surgery. Postoperatively, we need to consider about some things also in terms of increased inflammation, which can often happen, and that can lead to blood failure. It can also cause post-pressure spikes and the need for more glaucoma medications. In a study looking at patients who had prior functional blebs, it was seen that even in uncomplicated cataract surgery, the pressure could rise 3 millimeters of mercury. So what are some of the solutions for looking for better outcomes for these patients? Well, let's talk about the time before in the clinic. We need to take extra time and steps, and these should include evaluations that look at the type of glau prior glaucoma surgery, look at the stage of disease, is it controlled or uncontrolled, look at the angle on gonioscopy to help decide where the maybe uncontrolled pressure is coming from, or if this is a candidate for a viable MIGS procedure that can help lower eye pressure more or possibly get patients off medications. We also need to look at the cornea and the pupil to decide for planning of the surgery. We need to set proper expectations with the patient. In order for them to understand what their visual outcomes are going to be, I always show them their visual fields to help them understand. The worst scenario is a patient 2020 who's still unhappy because he thought the veil of the glaucoma was going to be lifted with the cataract surgery. Important also to talk about potential failure of prior surgery and potential additional steps that might need to be made. In terms of IOL choice, factors that help decide are the stage of the disease in terms of visual field, the ocular surface uh, if there's disease there, and also if they have astigmatism. Typically, a lot of these patients get aspheric IOLs because of contrast sensitivity issues. However, they can be candidates for astigmatic correction, especially if they're interested in spectacle dependence and have stable, um, have had stable surgery for some time. This patient had a torque IOL after having his uh, bleb for several years. Uh, he did great. Also, having this combined with a goniotomy with trabectome, he was medication-free and seeing at distance well without glasses. Now with this visual field, these are not good candidates for extended depth of focus or multifocals because they begin to encroach on central fixation and those patients don't do so well with those types of lenses. In regards to when to consider MIGS as an option with these patients, three factors I consider. Is the eye pressure controlled on one or more medications? Is the pressure not controlled? Or do they have, and do they have at least 180 degrees of viable uh, angle tissue that I could use for the MIGS procedure? And benefits from this, studies have shown, are that there can be an increase in eye pressure after doing MIGS procedures after traditional glaucoma surgery, as well as there could be an aid in helping to stabilize the fluctuation of eye pressure spikes that can happen after this type of surgeries in these type of patients. Um, in terms of MEGS and which ones to consider, I've used uh, various mixed procedures and had good eye pressure reduction in goniotomy procedures, stents, canaloplasty, combination of canaloplasty and goniotomy procedures, as well as conjunctival uh, stents. So there, that's encouraging that many different options can help. In terms of the intraoperative thoughts, Anesthesia with topical is best to avoid the potential of a, a hemorrhage with a retrobulbar block. One needs to be very flexible about your incision site and you need to avoid the bleb. Understand also that there will be things going in and out of those, those incisions so they need to be well away from the bleb to protect it. 
if there's an overhanging blab single simple technique that I learned from Leon Herndon using a 57 degree blade that could be used in order to excise uh, that overhanging bleb to, uh, approximate it to the limbus and then excised in order to create a clean break and better visualization for the cataract surgery and for the patient. In terms of tube shunts, you have to look at the tube are long or, or if they're coming close to the cornea or uh, pressing against the cataract. Here I use a Sinsky hook through paracentesis to stabilize uh, the tube and then I use uh, intraocular scissors in order to cut the tube shorter and then use a utrata forceps to remove the tube uh, piece from the eye. Pearls for consideration after surgery, you need to think about eye pressure spike prevention as well as aggressive inflammatory control. Uh, this may require the use of low concentration steroids like loprednol uh, and may increase use of NSAIDs. I like to use the once, uh, once a day NSAIDs maybe two or three times a day to help to reduce the need for steroids or the frequency. Also watch for blood failure and PAS formation. So in summary, cataract surgery in prior TRAB or tube patients do present challenges and these evaluations need to be more uh, with more time and more thought and preparation. Patients' expectations have to be addressed before to make sure that the outcomes can be positive and MIGS does play a great role in helping to lower the eye pressure. I hope these pearls uh, can help your glaucoma patients achieve greater visual outcomes. And if you want to see more of these videos and maybe in slower motion, uh, check out the, my Eye Glaucoma YouTube channel uh, for these and other educational videos on glaucoma. Thank you.